Hello and welcome to Everything's All Right, a bi-monthly podcast for authors and writers with tips, tricks, and challenges to level up your writing skills. I am A.S. Lewis, your host, guide, and guru for all things word-related. I'm a published science fiction and fantasy author, a published nonfiction author, and a fan fiction enthusiast, which means I'm also a really big nerd. For the past several years, I've been writing everything from multi-million dollar grant proposals, to sci-fi novels, to ghost writing for national leaders and politicians, to spoken word poetry, and anything and, well, everything in between. And I'm here to help you improve your writing, no matter what type of writing that is. And who doesn't want to get better? So let's get right to it. Hello again, I'm your host, A.S. Lewis, and welcome to this episode, episode four of Everything's All Right, a podcast for writers looking to practice, sharpen, and expand their skills. In previous episodes, we spent some time talking about creating great stories, how to start them, how to end them, how to plan them, and even how to tell them. But what about who tells them? Choosing a storyteller is nearly as important as choosing your story, and you have many different choices, five in fact, but before we dive into the different types of voices your storyteller could have, let's talk about the narrative voice in general. Has anyone ever told you a story and you realize later that they weren't even there when the story happened? You may question the story's accuracy because the storyteller wasn't present. The storyteller has no perspective. That's why for your story, the perspective of your narrative voice is pretty important. Narrative voice is based on perspective. It's based on point of view. A story is likely to sound very different if you change the point of view of your storyteller. How would the story of Little Red Riding Hood be different if you heard from Grandma or the Woodsman? or even the wolf. Change the point of view and you change the story. So you have to pick a perspective for your storyteller, but what are your options? The good news is you have plenty to choose from. The bad news is you have plenty to choose from. Let's take a look at your options. You have three major choices. First person, second person, and third person point of view. First person point of view is the I point of view. In this case, the story is told from the perspective of one character, the capital I of the narrator. This point of view is great because it kind of simulates a sort of intimacy between the narrator and the reader. The reader knows everything the narrator knows. And that includes how the narrator feels and thinks about what's happening in the story. First person POV, that's point of view, is really great for main characters that like to brood and angst over conflicts and obstacles in the story. So if you're the type that gives your main characters these long introspective paragraphs of internal dialogue, first person is a great choice. But it also has its limitations. As I mentioned, in first person point of view, the reader knows what the character knows and only what the character knows. This can be problematic with certain types of stories. For example, let's say you're writing a thriller or a mystery and a character is plotting behind your main character's back. Because there are things happening outside of the knowledge of the main character, it must happen outside the knowledge of the reader as well. Because of this limitation on information, First-person stories must be meticulously thought out, so the reader and the character get the information they need when they need it. Naturally, after first-person point of view, there's second-person point of view. Second-person POV is not utilized as much as first or third because its relationship is unique between the narrator and the reader basically because there really isn't a narrator. 
In second person point of view, the reader and the main character are not divorced from one another. Instead, they work together. Second person POV is the you point of view. When using second person, it tends to work generally in one of two ways. One, the narrator is talking to you, the reader, directly. Or, the main character in the story is you, the reader. The second way, the one where you're the main character, is a favorite from my childhood. Choose Your Own Adventure and Twist a Plot books were popular in my house, and each book was written in second person because it was you, the reader, having the adventure. Okay, okay. I want to pause right here and just do a quick nostalgic shout out to one book that consumed a portion of my childhood. The Badlands of Hark by the wonderfully talented R.L. Stein. This book, <laughs> I spent hours upon hours with this particular adventure. And as frustrating as it sometimes was, I loved every minute of it. So much so that when I started teaching, Navigating through the adventure became a class-wide activity and exercise at the start of each class. If you've never read a second-person point of view adventure book, I highly recommend this one. Okay, okay, enough about me. What about third-person point of view? Well, third-person is the he, she, it point of view. It is told from the perspective of someone outside of the story. Because the narrator is not involved in the story, there is the opportunity to share information with the reader that is unknown to the characters. On the one hand, that could definitely make things easier for you as a writer, but of course, there's a catch. There isn't just one type of third-person point of view writing. There are three. Think of the three types of third-person as magnifications on a microscope. At the lowest magnification where you can see the larger picture, that is your third person omniscient point of view. This is the God perspective. The narrator knows all and can see all and can provide that unlimited information to the reader. Turn the magnification up a little and you get third person objective point of view. With this perspective, the narrator can see everything but knows nothing. The inner thoughts and motives of the characters is still hidden from the reader, but their actions are on full display. Crank the mag magnification to the max, and your field of vision drastically decreases, but it also sharpens to a tight focus. This is your third-person limited point of view. This is the character level point of view. Similar to first-person, third-person limited also lets the reader know everything that a particular character knows. However, unlike first person, the character can change. This sort of intimate knowledge can shift from character to character. You just have to make sure that the character shifts are very clear to the reader, or else you risk losing them in the body hopping confusion. So, now you know what your options are, how do you know which is best for your story? Well, ultimately the choice is completely up to you. There are a few tips and guidelines that might help you decide what will work best for your story. Let's look at some tips and tricks to ensure that your story has a little perspective. Here are some things to keep in mind when choosing the point of view for your story. First person point of view. If you want to tell your story from the eyes and voice of a quirky or pensive main character, choose first person. Or if your story requires a close personal relationship between reader and main character, then first person is for you. Second person point of view. If you want to speak directly to your reader, then choose second person. Or, if you're feeling adventurous and you want your reader to live out that adventure, then second person is the point of view for you. Third person point of view. If you want the wide world of information available to your reader throughout the story, 
or if you want the reader to have access to the narrator or author's thoughts and opinions within the story, then third person is definitely the way to go. Also, if you don't want a close identification between, say, the reader and the characters because maybe you're going to make the character disgusting or look like a fool, third person POV is the best choice for you. However, before we move on, I feel obligated to make one last warning word of shifting points of view within your writing. You can shift from different points of view in your story, but please do so with extreme caution. You don't want to run the risk of confusing or frustrating your reader. First, determine if you even need to change the point of view. Perhaps it's not that you need to shift POV so much as you need to change the POV. For example, I was halfway through writing a short story in third person, but something felt off. Yeah, off every time I reread my writing. When I started a new scene, I accidentally began it in first person, and wow, it read so much better that I ended up revising the whole thing to make sure it was all in first person point of view. So that's just to say that don't be afraid to go back and change it. You don't necessarily need to shift the point of view as revisit which one you chose altogether. But if you feel that your story needs a shifting perspective, that's fine. But make sure you only change perspective when you change scenes, or even better, when you change chapters. Above all, shifts and points of view should be done strategically. We know that the perspective of the storyteller can change the story, so if you must change the point of view in your work, be absolutely certain that it is essential to do so to tell your story the way it needs to be told. Never be afraid to revisit the point of view you should use and always be prepared to change it when necessary. Remember, your story should be a work of art, not a work of convenience. Now, let's put our pens where our words are and put what we've learned into practice. Here is your bi-weekly wordsmith challenge. Before we get into today's challenge, let's give some love to our previous superstar submissions. Today, we will acknowledge two winners. The first comes from our story closings challenge. Top honors go to Katie C with her ending lines. Don't cry, sweetheart. Mommy's here, Lottie said as the crowd that had gathered around her stared on in horror with looks of disgust on their faces. Mommy's here. Okay, is it just me, or is this ending Child's Play slash Children of the Corn creepy? Either way, it's a nice piece of writing. For our description challenge, we have a repeat winner with the writer Chi once again taking first place with his PB&J entry. The kitchen was spotless, everything in its proper place. The floor shone with the gleam of having freshly been mopped. The counters had been wiped down and dishes washed and put away clean. The lights were off, with only the barest sliver of morning light breaking the dark of the empty, serenely quiet room. A quiet broken by the clang of metal and hastened footsteps approaching from down the hall. Jason burst into the room, red-eyed, hair unkempt. He was barefoot, pants zipped, and belt unbuckled and flapping in the wind as it jingled back and forth. Jason hurried frantically around, grabbing jars, silverware, a plastic bag, a paper towel, and lastly, the loaf of bread. He deposited the collection on the island in the center of the room. After a brief fight with the twist tie, he liberated two slices of bread from the bag and placed them side by side on the paper towel. He snapped up the jar of peanut butter from the counter and screwed the top. He stopped briefly and listened. 
Above him, in the distance, he heard footsteps. Sparing a glance at the clock, he furrowed his brow and stabbed a knife into the jar. He withdrew a large clump of the brown, lumpy peanut mush and began to spread it on the first slice of bread. He then used a corner of the paper towel to clean the knife and opened the second jar. The sweet scent of fruit preserve filled his nose, and he quickly used the knife to extract some of the purple spread from the jar. He tried to hurry his pace, hearing footsteps bounding down the stairs. There was a soft squish sound as he slapped the covered slices of bread together. Then taking care to keep both pieces in line with one another, he used the knife to remove the crust from around the outer edge. After following up with a diagonal cut across the entire sandwich, he placed it in the plastic bag. The footsteps were drawing closer to the kitchen. Jason sealed the bag as a small, bright six-year-old entered the room. Did you remember to place the jelly on top this time? The child inquired. Jason thought for a second, smiling back at the child. He then subtly flipped the sandwich over, never taking his eyes off the young inquisitor. Of course! What kind of freak makes a sandwich upside down? He replied, handing over the sandwich for inspection. The child examined the sandwich and finally smiled with an energetic nod. Jason took the sandwich and placed it in a brown bag that had been preloaded with an apple, juice box, and a bag of chips. See, just like Mom makes. The child took the bag and turned to leave. Thanks, Dad, though Mom wouldn't have had to flip the sandwich. And with that, the child bounded out of the messy kitchen to catch the school bus. Congratulations to both our winners. Keep up the good work and keep writing. Now, for those of you out there feeling a little jealous or left out, here's your chance to show your stuff. Here is your bi-weekly wordsmith challenge. In a paragraph or scene no longer than 500 words, write about some kids playing a game of hide and seek. Choose which point of view you think would work best and write that at the top of your page. Have fun with your scene, but make sure that you're using the point of view you identified and only that point of view. Once you've completed your point of view scene, you can email it to asluisbooks at gmail.com. The best scene will be highlighted in a future episode and on the website. Next week, we will highlight the winner for best plot outlines. And remember, if you participate in a challenge and submit your work, you could be our next superstar writer. And if you don't want to share your work, that's okay too. The important thing is that you're writing and trying something new. That's how writing gets better. Even if you hate what you wrote, I promise you the practice will pay off. If you've enjoyed the show and would like to hear more, please click subscribe so you never miss an episode. Keep writing and remember, everything's all right.